Hello everybody, this is uh, Glorious Liar and I am going to be showing off my Kirby Canvas Curse Tass, which is uh, for the Nintendo DS. Yeah, I don't have a webcam, so that's why you can hear me but not see me. So I'm about to start uh, playing the Tass, but first I want to talk about a trick that you're going to be seeing almost immediately. Um, it's called launching, and you know what, I'm just going to explain it as it goes. So uh, get ready to play now. All right, so this is Kirby Canvas Curse. Um, there's gonna be a glitch that's gonna happen almost immediately. This is an entirely touch input game. And what happens is if you draw a line that Kirby's writing and Kirby collides with another one at a specific pixel, Kirby will actually get launched in the opposite direction that you're going. So, <laughs> as you can see there, I finished the first level quite quickly. And heading into the second level, I can actually go out of bounds. You go so fast that you can go into walls, as you're seeing here and here. Um, here you, you can actually ride a wall downwards. Um, out of bounds movement is really tricky, but if you have a camera locked wall, you can actually get sucked lower into the floor, which is what I did right there. And now we're on to Ravine Road. This level is more wide open, so it's more just about these really big launches. And there goes the first three levels. It goes by really quick, so it's kind of hard to commentate as you go, but you know, gotta, gotta deal with it. Um, here we're on to the first uh, boss battle. Um, first we have to get to the boss room, and Kirby moves by placing all these paddles. And you can actually place up to about 20 to 30 um, a second, um, and every single time you do it, you get a nice big launch, and it goes by really quickly, and it looks really cool. And we can do that to the boss. <laughs> and, oh yeah, I kind of uh, skipped over the whole fact. Um, once you beat a level, there's normally like a little mini game that you have to play, but you can do a soft reset um, immediately upon entering it, and your progress for beating the level is saved. So that saves about two minutes over the entire run if you do it. Um, after every level. Okay, here's Ghost Ground. Ghost Ground is pretty cool because um, you got these big launches. And then on this screen, you're going to see me ride the wall all the way to the top. So, um, a thing about Out of Bounds is once you're lodged inside a wall, um, you get ludicrous uh, vertical speed if you don't draw a line to tether yourself to. So, if you know approximately where you're going, you can abuse that fact and go up so fast that you'll actually go off the screen and are completely uncontrollable. Um, here's another mini boss. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I abused uh, invincibility frames to just go straight through those bombs. Sorry if I'm missing anything. It's, <laughs> it goes by so fast, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough to commentate, but doing my best here. Okay. Um, on to mag mount. Here just gotta wait out um, those blocks exploding for a second. We're actually gonna take advantage of invisibility frames again there. And we're gonna do another wall ride right here. You can't actually um, go up untethered because if you go all the way off screen you'll you'll instantly die. So I had to sort of tether myself all the way up to a point where I could safely exit the wall but it still got me all the way to the top. Um, here's another type of boss minigame, um, paint roller. You just gotta connect the dots in a specific order really fast. Obviously not a uh, challenge for tool assisted runs. Uh, something you can do between frames is you, it only checks for connecting dots like every two frames or something so you can uh, do some like wonky spiking and stuff in between. But uh, yeah, this is this is one of those mini games that's sort of like made for tasks because it's like you can do it absolutely guaranteed perfect. The rest, the rest of the game is an open challenge, but this <laughs> we've we've reached the the skill ceiling here.
All right, and that is level two. Okay, on to Rift Ruin. This is a pretty cool level. It's got a lot more screens than a normal level. Um, here you can just, right there you just saw me sort of like clip through the floor. Um, as I did here, skip the entire point of that room, which is to drop a cannon by falling really far. Um, using, uh, using the absurd speed that you can get from launching, you can just sort of bypass anything that you want. Here, Contrast Cave, we're going to do another quick wall ride down. Um, fun fact, uh, okay, so what you saw me do right there is clip through the floor, which is actually pretty difficult because the physics in water is different from the air, so you have to do a different kind of clip. And where I actually clipped into was a special uh, exit that you're not supposed to go through. You're supposed to get there from the third screen, but it actually pops you out at the very end of the level if you do that, skipping a mini boss. And this level right here, uh, Silver Submarine, it's normally a very like winding and long level if you do it RTA, but um, the transitions from area to area sort of are accessible through some thin barriers, which is really convenient for tasks because you can just bypass them by going out of bounds and skipping the majority of like the long winding corridors. Okay, so here we have... Um, King DDD, uh, I forget the name of the mini boss, but um, you need to collect all this uh, food to sort of speed you up. You want to, in order to do this optimally, you want to get as many of those max speeds as possible, which you get by collecting two of them at the same time. But there's sort of a little cooldown on it, so it's not like you could do it over and over and over again. Um, you can only get another max speed once your max speed has. Uh, fully disappeared. So you'll see me get these individual pieces of food in between the max speeds to sort of uh, fill in the gaps wherever I can't actually get a guaranteed max speed. Um, or sometimes I'll delay a max speed because I need to wait out the timer of the last one. We've already beat the first, uh, what, nine levels, three bosses, in under seven minutes, so comparing that to RTA, that's pretty incredible. Okay, this is Machine Mansion. Um, they introduced lasers, nothing particularly interesting. You can get right to the um, third screen of the game with a couple launches and quick out of bounds, but we come across the first auto-scroller, so um, yeah, this is a good point for some downtime. Uh, mostly just play around in this section, it lasts about a minute, minute and a half. Um, normally you, you'd think, like, why can't I skip this sort of thing by doing the normal shenanigans of you know, just clipping and going out of bounds and all that, but one of the most secure and unbreakable aspects of this game is the camera lock itself. Um, the camera locked walls are something that are almost entirely impenetrable, as opposed to all the barriers that you see, all the floors, the walls, the ceilings. Um, if you ever run into an instance of a camera lock, that is when you know that you're truly stuck in an area for a given amount of time. So, instances like this, you gotta kinda sorta just wait it out and let the game control the pace for you. But it doesn't happen too frequently, so you get still tons of super fast paced action. Should be Dreamy Darkness, which yeah, this is this is probably my favorite level in the game because it's got this is just all speed and just getting to point A to point B as fast as possible, ignoring all the limits of the level. We don't need to light any lanterns. We just need to go, go, go. 
And here, right there, um, that was supposed to be a mini boss, but and that was a mini boss that actually locks your camera but there's a startup time on the torch that lights that room so you can actually go so fast through that room that the torch can't light up in time to actually start the camera lock in the mini game and you can just bypass it and here we're going to do a, a barrier skip that actually skips an entire room of puzzles which saves about a minute and a half to two minutes over doing it rpa which is pretty incredible just shows you the power of that glitch like just one instance of using it right there saves about one and a half to two minutes and get another auto scroller. This is uh, one of my least favorite worlds just because of how much time you spend in auto scrollers. But um, this one actually is more interesting than some of the other ones because of how winding it is up and down and all that. And so you can't just completely zone out. You have to actually hit these specific triggers to keep the camera going. At um, You want to hit them as fast as possible so that you spend no time with the camera just sitting there waiting for you to progress a little bit. Um, so that's what I do. Uh, you saw me go out of bounds earlier. It was just to play around a bit, but also hit some triggers as early as possible. And that's the end of this world. Uh, the order that you do the bosses doesn't matter. Um, so I just... I don't know exactly what my rationale when I made this task was to which order to do them in, but I just... I think I wanted to just spread them out a little bit so it wouldn't be just really repetitive. Um, so you already saw Paint Roller, this is just a little more challenging. The level 2 of each of the different boss fights are just slightly more challenging, but basically the same. Um, little note about this task. This task came out um, almost four years ago to the day. Maybe within like a week. In about a week it'll probably be four years old, so that's a cool milestone. And there you go, that's Paint Roller 2. Okay, so we won't have to see this one anymore. Um, the way it works is you have to beat each of the bosses two times with uh, the easy and the hard version. And this one's over. And I think I saved Krako for last, so if I am correct, then uh, you'll see D2D as the next boss. Sorry, spoilers. Okay, Cold Course is a really cool level, because what you're going to see me do is um, I'm going to launch into this room right here. And this room has an exit that goes to each of the um, three subsections of the level. And by clipping out of bounds there, I am able to take advantage of the exit that leads to the end of the third screen, which is right by the end portal, basically skipping the entire level right there. Okay, and on to Dungeon Dome. Dungeon Dome's a pretty cool level. Um, got this wall ride here to avoid going in the water, which is important. And we got this launch right here, which will put us instantly into this boss fight, which is uh, unskippable. Um, you got this no ink field right here where you can't actually draw inside there, so I take advantage of um, like going out of bounds and doing a small launch there at the end, trying to kill all those enemies as fast as possible to spawn the portal. And, yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, here's a very precise launch. What you just saw there went by in the blink of an eye, but it was actually incredibly difficult. And right there you saw me just launch into a ceiling, which is a lot more difficult than just launching into a regular wall. It's kind of hard to explain, but ceilings and floors are much more impenetrable than uh, just regular vertical walls. Um, I don't know if I can go into the depth here to fully explain it, but... Launching into an angled ceiling like that is basically launching into a ceiling and a wall at the same time, which means you have to get the absolute maximum speed as possible. And I kind of just glanced over the main mechanic of this game, so I'm going to take this time to sort of explain it a little bit. So if you're, if you're attached to a line and you come in contact at a very specific pixel and angle with another line, there's sort of this fail-safe mechanic that warps you back to the last uh, the origin of the last line segment that you were writing because once you 
get into that sort of collision state. Um, it's a bit ambiguous where Kirby should end up attached to. So as a failsafe mechanism, you actually get warped back to the origin of the last line segment that you were writing. And a cool quirk of that is if that line segment that you were writing has disappeared, either fizzled out or, I don't know, you, you can sort of control when that line segment will disappear. Uh, when you get warped back to the origin of, of that line segment, you are untethered, and that rapid change in movement is actually interpreted as speed. So, you can get launched backwards at variable speeds and angles that you are in complete control of, because all you have to do is just control the length and the angle of the last line segment that you were writing, um, activate the glitch, and make sure that that line segment has fizzled out, and then you get the launch. You can do the same sort of thing to clip directly into walls if the line segment originates inside of a wall. Uh, pretty technical, but I um, hope I did a good job explaining it there. Here, this is a pretty cool level because uh, you saw that big wall right at the beginning, uh, just skipping through all these winding corridors by passing through these little thin barriers, going out of bounds there to just get straight to the end. Uh, this is a volatile volcano, pretty cool level. Um, here you're gonna see a really cool bank shot directly into the boss mini game. That was very precise. Walls are merely suggestions. That's a good way of putting it, Nordic. <laughs> and here I just gotta wait out these enemies falling. Uh, and do it as fast as possible with some launches. And here there's supposed to be a rising lava cycle, but you can actually just launch your way through this room so fast it doesn't even have a chance to rise up above the end portal. You can just get straight there. Okay, and here's a uh, silent seabed. This is normally the longest level in the game, one of them, but there are just so many easy free skips right here that you can just get... Here you get straight to the auto-scroller and you go, oh man, auto-scroller, that means the camera's locked, I can't really do anything about this. But guess what, in this specific auto-scroller, the end portal spawns uh, just a little below where you spawn, so you can just get out of bounds, go all the way down there, and <laughs> ride the moving camera into the end portal, and that goes by in like 15 seconds, or normally it would take at least like two and a half. Okay, and save the best for last, Krakow 2. Or I guess originally it was Krakow Jr., and this is Krakow, so... It's basically the same thing, but just... Just wreckage. You, you, you can just place those paddles so fast that you get absolutely absurd speed. And because of this, this is a tool-assisted environment, you just... You can go wherever you want, do whatever you want. All that jazz. Okay, um, Frozen Fantasy. So here we're going to do a wall ride up to the top of the level. And normally this section would be like a, effectively an auto-scroller because of the no wing zone. You can't really control it, you'll just fall to your death. But we can launch all the way through it. And that last screen you saw, it skipped just an enormous puzzle. It's, it goes by so fast, it's so hard to explain what I just skipped there. But trust me, that's normally a very long level. Okay, and now we're at a true auto scroller that lasts quite a while, so if anyone wants to jump in with donations, I can pause the commentary for a bit. Um, or I can keep going, depends on if there's anything to read. I'll take that as a no. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so just more play around here. Um, this is Mad Mechanism, they throw some lasers at you, they throw this crushing wall from the floor, which, you know, in a tool-assisted environment, it, it doesn't matter, you know. I can get to safety at, at the very last second and it would be no trouble. So I try and make it as, you know, interesting as possible without 
just doing the same thing that I do in all the other auto scroller sections, just collecting all the stars, launching around, having some close calls with enemies and spikes and floors and getting crushed. Try to keep everyone on the edge of their seats. Okay, and here we're going to do a really long wall ride to skip that whole no ink section. And a benefit of that is we actually get all the way down to this portal which skips a mini boss. And we skipped this entire last screen as well by just doing a quick clip through that corner which goes right to where the end portal spawns. Which is random so I had to actually manipulate the RNG to get it to spawn in that top left part. And here's a cool set of launches to bypass a lot, all the, that whole spike maze, the that that last screen had like a really very large room where you, you're in a low gravity and you have to go push a bunch of buttons, but you can just skip through the obstacles there by launching out of bounds. Here's another auto scroller. <laughs> auto scrollers are truly the bottle, bottleneck of this task. If there were if there was some way to just untether yourself from this camera lock. Oh gosh, I haven't even tried to calculate how much time that would save, but it would be pretty ridiculous. And this is already so much faster than RTA, even given the fact that RTA catches up on all the other scrollers. But again, this is no challenge for Tass. Look at how close I can get to these spikes without touching them. Oh, oops, I accidentally touched one. Alright, and that's all the main levels. Now we are on to Drossia. But first we have to go through the world of Drossia, which is this quick level which is very horizontal and can just be we can just launch through it. And here's a really cool bank shot into the end portal, which I think looks pretty cool. And now we are on to the final boss. First we must defeat Jurassia. So Jurassia, um, you can only damage Jurassia once you've uh, reflected one of those little uh, fireballs back at her. And then she becomes vulnerable and then you need to get... You need to hit her, but you also need to get the maximum amount of damage. You need to hit her after you have gone through a loop. So once once you go through a, a loop, um, you see that all that air rushing around Kirby, that actually um, causes you to do more damage when you uh, hit her in the vulnerable state. Um, but in between all the times at which she launches fireballs at you, um, there are all these various attacks that you need to dodge or enemy spawns that you need to deal with. and. Um, took a long time in the making of this to manipulate the fastest possible ones that I could find. Um, can't say for sure whether or not the pattern is optimal, but it's definitely the best that I found in a pretty extensive brute force search. I, I made this task effectively on my own with very little assistance, so I had to just work with what I had, my own knowledge. Not a very large community around this game either, so I uh, just had to do the best with the hand that I was dealt. And I think I did. I think I got a pretty good pattern in the end, so I'm not at all upset about it. And here, this should be the final hit on Dressia. And there you go. Um, okay, so once Drossia is down, now this is the true final boss, which is Drossia Soul. And Soul is um, a bit trickier, much, much more random. Um, what you want to do, the only the only way you can um, really hurt Drossia Soul outside of the normal vulnerability window is to have her spawn these uh, paramatter, which you can reflect back at her and actually damage her. So um, you get enough of those and then you can actually skip a one of the cycles to get 
her to be vulnerable again to hit her directly. So here you see, you gotta tap her three times and then launch into her. Try to do it in the coolest way possible, not just riding a line into her, just launching from out the other side of the screen. Again, all this, all this had to be manipulated to the best of my ability uh, to get the the main. It, it matters less what the in-between patterns are than than Drosiusol actually becoming vulnerable and you being able to hit her. That is a lot more important than anything else because that is where you get the main amount of damage. So you can see pretty quickly, I got her into this final panic mode. Um, you want to keep her out of this sort of uh, frenzied mode uh, for as long as possible because the patterns become a lot longer when you do that. Um, and if you can keep her out of that for as long as possible, then you can um, get her health as low as possible before getting into this, and then you'll only need about one more hit to finish her off. I manipulated these meteor patterns because um, I think they're the fastest of all of them. Even better than the paramatter, which would actually do some damage. And there you go. That's final hit. Game is over. Kirby Canvas Curse has been beaten in 25 minutes, 45 seconds, and 53 milliseconds. Good to, good to go back and watch this every once in a while. It was a very fun task to make, and you know? I'm, I'm proud of the end result. So uh, thank you for letting me showcase this. This is uh, this is great. And thank you everyone in the chat for the GGs. I appreciate that.